Good morning. Good morning. Happy Sunday. So, no meal plan this week. I am winging it. Um, I want to try to get some stuff cleaned out of the freezer and cleaned out of the pantry. Um, I was moving some stuff around. I shouldn't say pantry because I don't really have one. But the shelving units that I have like in my garage walkway and my coat closet that I keep food on. I've been trying to go through there and clean some stuff out and I reorganized so and plus I knew I was going to go to Costco so I thought I'm just gonna wait till I go to Costco then we'll worry about what we're gonna eat so did you grab a remote we don't have a remote to close the door look who's coming with me today why why what why is it coming with you why are you coming with me today be tortured that's just not nice. With high food cost. Really? It drives me nuts. But what do you like about coming along today? I'm spending time with you. Oh, that sounded really like forced. No, not at all. Okay. It's, it's straight from the heart. Okay. Well, here we go. Just trying out the furniture. Are you just going to sit here and I'll do the shop and I'll come back and get you? Yeah. <laughs> well, we got out of there for <laughs> no, we get out of there for less than three hundred dollars. That's the first, but it was darn close. Two ninety three. Honey, when we get home and do a Costco haul, you could play Vanna White. Hey everyone, so I am back from Costco and you probably noticed, it's, I'm sure you noticed, that Mike and I were there together. And if you've been following my updates on Casper, you will have seen that um, we weren't leaving him alone anymore just because he was doing so bad. Well, um, I'm just going to say that it had to be you guys praying for him. Um, he still wasn't eating as of Thursday. Still no food as of Thursday. So it had been eight days with no food other than what I was able to like literally force him to eat and hold his mouth shut. And like I said, he was, already has heart disease and his kidneys were failing according to the blood work we had done. So I needed to get out of the house a little bit. So Thursday, because I hadn't been out other than taking him to the vets in over a week. So Thursday, I took him up to visit my mom because my godmother was up there. Um, so I went to see my godmother, my mom, my grandma, and my mom's dog, Cooper, who you've probably seen in videos, had to have some work done on his one toenail. And um, he was in like a soft cast up to his first, up to his knee joint. Um, and he's a very hyper dog, so I knew he was laid up so he wouldn't upset Casper and jump at him and stuff like he normally does. Um, because Casper at that point was still like just, there's no life in him. Just blah. And not eating. And weak. So I took him up there to my mom's and my mom and my grandmother, my godmother and myself and my stepdad, we all prayed for him up there too. And now keep in mind, he's been on heart meds, he's been on kidney meds. Um, but before that, he was on two different rounds of two different antibiotics. First for a respiratory illness, then for, he no sooner finished up those 10 days, that he was on another 10 day round of anti different antibiotic for the Lyme vaccine reaction that he had. So this dog has been through the war. And again, we were prepared several times to say goodbye to him. In fact, the last two Friday nights, other than last night, it was the two Friday nights before that, we spent three hours at the vet, two Fridays in a row. Not sure what we are going to do. So Thursday, I come home from my mom's and still nothing. So Thursday night, I walk in the living room with a mug of orange sherbet. And he's sniffing, like, just sniffing the air. And 
mind you, anything I've ever had to eat, I've always offered it to him while he's been sick. Because if I could get him to eat anything, I was going to get him to eat anything. So I stuck this spoon of orange sherbet down in front of him, and he didn't lick it, but he really sniffed it hard. Like, he just kept sniffing at the spoon, then he'd turn his head, then he'd go back to sniffing again. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to try your favorite dog treat. Who knows? Maybe you'll eat. So his favorite dog treat is made by Caesar. They're the Caesar Softies. He has a filet mignon flavor. So I offered him that and he ate it. Well, I thought it's gonna pee my pants. I was so excited. So then um, he hasn't had any normal bowel movements either. It's been like brown water coming out of his back end. Again, I, I wasn't expecting any more than that because he's been living off of medicine, water, and a little bit of soft food, like ground up dog food that I've been shoving in him. So I thought, well, if you ate that, I'm going to see if you eat one of your little tiny milk bone minis. They're like this big. He ate two of those. Now, he still was refusing his hard dog food. But this was like 10 o'clock Thursday night. I went in and woke Mike up. I was so excited. I'm like, oh my god, the dog is eating. The dog is eating. And I didn't want to overload his stomach, so I didn't give him anything else after that. So I thought, we're going to see how he does, see if he keeps it down. I got up at 2.30 with Mike Friday morning, offered him another milk bone, and he ate it. So I got really excited. So needless to say, all of a sudden, he's back to eating again. As soon as he started eating, it was like, oh, I had my old dog back. I'll have to show him to you then. Um, but he's been running around here like he's never felt better. It's like I have a brand new dog. And again, I can attribute it to nothing, but I have people all over the world, you guys praying for him and my family praying for him. I called the vet Friday afternoon and I said, look, this is, this is where we're at with this dog. I said, can you explain anything to me? She says a dog with kidney numbers as high as his were very rarely bounced back from that. Now we don't know what his kidney numbers are like at this point. I am taking him back to the vet tomorrow, which is Monday morning at 10 15. We're going to do another round of blood work and we're going to try to capture some urine and do a, a concentration level on that just to see how these kidneys are functioning. And I said, you know, would all these antibiotics that he was on in meds cause those numbers to be that elevated? She said, absolutely not. It was almost, she said, what would cause a dog's kidney numbers to be elevated that high that his were? Is either he's in renal failure, kidney failure, or he got into something completely toxic for him. Well, he's never out of our sight, so I knew he didn't get into anything toxic. That dog is, you know, he's under our care constantly. He doesn't have a yard to go roam in. He can't be outside by himself, so we knew that wasn't it. Um, so I'm not getting my hopes up a ton yet. You know, I, again, I wanna wait and see what this blood work comes back like. Um, but his bowels went back to normal right away. So Mike and I decided, you know, we'll test it today. We'll go to Costco and come back. He still is getting us up in the middle of the night to go outside and go to the bathroom, um, which he didn't used to do that, but he's still, he's doing that. And thank goodness I am a light sleeper because all he has to do is start prancing around on the bed because he sleeps with us and I'm awake. So last night he was up at 2.15. He had me up to go potty and then he had us up again at quarter after six. So Mike took him out. Um, and it was normal. All kinds of bowel movements with him have been normal. Up until right before we left to go away, he went outside and went again. So that's like three times this morning. And it was very runny. This is probably TMI for you guys. I'm sorry, but I have to tell you about my boy. So I said, well, there can't be much left in him. He's going three times a day and it's not like he's consumed a ton of food. So we left, we came back, and of course there was a little bit of diarrhea on the floor in front of the door. So he knows to go to the door, but if nobody's there to let him out, then, you know, he can't help it. So I definitely did not scold him or nothing. I told him he was a good boy for going to the door. But um, I'm going to show him to you. Little man! Little man! What are you doing? Are you a happy boy again? Huh? Are you? Are you a happy, healthy boy? Huh? What are you doing? Are you special? Are you a special little boy? 
I just saw my little pumpkin. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You're just a little baby. Yes, he's just jumping and a happy boy. Yes, he is. He's probably starving. He's always starving now all of a sudden. So anyway, looks like my camera battery is starting to die because I yap, 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 yap. Um, so I'm going to change my camera battery and then we'll do a Costco haul. Okay, Mike brought everything in from Costco and um, he just has it in two giant boxes. So as I pulled out of the box, I'll show it to you. So, giant thing of downy. This was on sale, $2.50 off, I believe. So I paid less than $10 for the downy, 197 loads. So that was a really good deal. Giant thing of tomatoes, because again, you guys know I have like a total tomato addiction. All right, hold on, the doggy wants out. And look there. You know it's freezing out there, little boy. Ah. Five pound bag of clementines. Some pumpkin flax granola. Butter. Some 100 watt light bulbs, LED bulbs. rotisserie chicken. We're going to pick at this for lunch today. Dishwasher packs. A pineapple. I hope I'm getting this in the camera since I can't see. Oh my lordy, that's heavy. A uh, 12 pound bag of organic light brown rice. Avocado oil. I just used the rest of mine this week, so I replaced it. And the organic, better than Boyan roasted chicken base. All right, now we're going to move the camera down to this end where he has all my meats and some of my veggies. All right, I'm giving this jarred sauce a try because you guys told me that it's wonderful. I don't buy jarred pasta sauce. I make my own, um, but everybody raves over this, so I'm gonna give it a try. So it's the Victoria White Linen Marinara Sauce. Got raspberries, blueberries, oh, Oh, the love of my life. Oh my gosh, my bacon. Oh, my bacon. I love my Costco bacon. I think I might need an intervention. I got some haddock. My three pack of organic ground beef. Bag of avocados. I've been buying these pretty regularly if you watch my videos. We've got a total of eight. There's four and four more of the New York strip steaks. Got an eight and a half pound hunk of sirloin. Um, roast and we'll get probably three meals out of this so for $33 that's $11 a meal for roast beef that is not bad at all plus even with those meals we'll probably have some leftovers out of that and the last thing was a six pack of the boneless skinless chicken breast and there's normally um, two breasts in each pack so that's like 12 um, pieces of chicken. Some of them have three pieces in if the pieces are small. So that's it. That's the end of my Costco haul. Let me take you off the stand here. So that's the end of my Costco haul. Again, thank you so, so much for all the prayers for my puppy. Again, I'm not sure what to expect at this point, but after I go to the vet tomorrow, I'll definitely update you. But um, the way he looks now, 
I'm hoping I can um, have them around for a lot longer. Caitlin, my oldest, is coming up to visit for a few days the end of the month, and this was originally her dog. <laughs> He's shaking to death because I had this door open yet from when he was outside. And you know how it is when a human loses weight? It's like you're cold all the time. Well, he's lost quite a bit of weight. Um, so he's like freezing all the time now. But anyway, we were hoping he would still be around for Caitlin to come up and see him. So, yep, that's what we're hoping for. Hi. What do you do? Are you special? Oh, you're just so cute. I do love you more than anything. Okay, I'm going to sign off now. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in a future video. Bye. Say bye.